Hello everyone and welcome to day 17 and 18 of our RV10 build. We are continuing work on both the rudder and the horizontal stabilizer. As you can see, there's somebody different in the video right now, and we had our friends Ari and Sarah in town visiting, and they'd heard about our plane, and so we had them come out in the garage and got to show them a little bit about what we were doing and uh, how it all works. And so I had taken off with Sarah to go to the quote unquote aviation department at Home Depot to get the um, blind rivets that we needed to fix the um, problem I talked about in the previous video on the rudder there and while I was gone it was kind of nice because it gave uh, Tyler a chance to work with uh, Ari on the uh, in inboard hinge bracket assembly um, for the horizontal stabilizer and a chance to kind of get to show him a lot about the different tools and how everything worked and uh, even get to uh, install a uh, rivet there on the, uh, the hinge bracket um, using the pneumatic squeezer. I think it was just kind of fun to get to show one of your close friends um, what you've been working on and uh, how it all works, how the rivet gun works, how the bucking bar works, and using the um, all the different tools, showing the different demo kits and how we learn to work everything and what the difference is with all the different um, parts and pieces so it's just really fun when you get a chance to share something that you're spending so much of your time on and that you're so um, passionate about uh, with you know a really good friend when we came back from our little jaunt to the aviation department uh, I was able to start working on trying to uh, fix the blind rivet that we'd removed there from the rudder with the new part that we just purchased so was able to just check the hole, make sure it was the right size, make sure it was going to work, and get that installed there in the back. And while I was doing that, Tyler, having just completed the inboard hinge bracket assembly, was now going to be using our torque wrench for the first time to install it using um, different uh, bolts that were part of the hardware. And so we got the torque wrench from uh, from Cleveland Tool, and it worked great, but it, it definitely is something, um, make sure to read all the directions. It's very, very subtle, the, the little shift that you feel in the handle uh, to notice when you've reached the right torque. So, um, but again, love it. We've used it since then. It works really, really well. Just, you know, I would just say that just to recognize and make sure to read through the directions because it, it is a very subtle little give um, to, to indicate to you that you've reached the right uh, setting there, the right, you've reached the correct torque on, um, on those, uh, the bolts you're installing. Moving on. So. After we'd gone and worked on all this and um, got everything there fixed and finished that day, we moved on the following day and actually now had Sarah working with us in the garage. And so this was pretty fun because I got to sit there with my great friend and get to teach her about uh, how to use all the different uh, tools that we had in the garage. And I got out one of our old demo kits from Vans and using that uh, I helped her to uh, drill out and deburr holes in the aluminum. Uh, we, I taught her how to drill out a rivet and how to uh, use the rivet gun with a bucking bar and how to use the pneumatic squeezer. It was really fun getting to spend so much time out there together and getting to teach her something new. And the great news is she had a pretty fun time, as you can hear, hear from uh, her own mouth with her reaction afterwards. <laughs> All right, let's start the plane. <laughs> That was a really great reaction to hear that enthusiasm. Uh, after this, we had a couple more things that we worked on. One of them was to use a little bit of acetone now that we had used the sealant there on the trailing edge wedge when assembling the two halves of the rudder together, uh, to use a little acetone on some cotton pads just to clean up any, uh, 
any extra that might have leaked out around the edges and just get that tidied up. And then the other thing was working on cutting the left and right front spar brackets for the horizontal stabilizer. I'd mentioned in another video about um, when I was trying to measure everything out there onto that little piece about trying to figure out how I was going to um, cut it and it's just that the shape of the bottom of the bracket makes it a bit tricky. I'm talking about on 8-3 uh, it's steps 3 and 4 and you can go and see it. it. It The bottom there of the bracket flares out a little bit from the back towards the front getting wider there at the front and um, what I found that worked well for, for me personally is to flip the bracket upside down and I used a, a wood block there underneath to uh, support the bracket and then to cut it along the line that I had drawn on the bottom there um, to mark the that flare there in that angle. So uh, I had Tyler shoot a little video there of what I'm talking about, but so it's upside down and you cut along the back first, that full length, and that takes a while because it's cutting through quite a long piece of metal there, quite tall now. Um, but that got me a nice flush, straight cut along the back and then made it a lot easier to then trace, uh, to cut down that uh, that angle there from the back to the front. But this just seemed easier to me than trying to figure out how to um, measure everything on the inside of the bracket or how to uh, cut there along the inside of the bracket. It, because of that curvature there that's on the inside uh, corner, uh, it just was easier for me personally to draw on the the flat part there on the bottom and on the back and then to flip it upside down and cut it that way. Uh, it will be really hot though when you're done cutting, just fair warning, so be careful. Don't just grab the pieces, they are really hot. But it was really great to get to share this with our friends and to show them what we're doing and something really fun was that after working with them there in the garage for the past two days we actually had each of them pull a, a blind rivet there on the rudder and just like with the one week wonder that we loved in 2018 up at Oshkosh we had each of them sign the rivet there uh, right next to the one that they'd installed so just something kind of fun and uh, I think that they both loved it and it's neat to now know that our two close friends have actually had a hand in installing a, um, a piece there on our plane so just a nice little memory after that went and used the uh, the bench grinder to uh, with the 3m deburring wheel on it and uh, just wanted to show how well that really works there to uh, to clean up the edge. So you can see here, there's a picture of what it looked like before uh, using that 3M wheel on it, and then how nice and clean it looks after uh, using that um, that 3M wheel. So again, it gets really hot using that deburring wheel, and so um, I ended up actually getting a little uh, bin of water and using that to then put the uh, each piece in um, when I finished deburring when I'd been deburring one for a while I would put it in the water and pick up the second one to start deburring it just to help cool it off the one thing I would say is that I, I did find that by putting it in the water it did lighten all of the marks that I had put on it uh, for where the holes needed to be drilled um, so if I were to go back and do it again, I would drill out those holes first while my marks um, that I had made on there were uh, fresh and very visible. And then I would go afterwards and after the holes have been drilled, go and deburr the edges. So that way I don't have to worry about um, any of the markings dissolving or becoming harder to read in the, um, from having gotten wet. So we had a really fun two days out there with our friends Ari and Sarah and uh, getting the chance to really share this whole experience with them. I think it's one thing when when you're talking to people about it and they hear about it, but I think it's totally different than to actually be there in the garage and get to see everything. And I think for it to kind of really uh, become real, even for them, that you're actually building an airplane. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And yeah, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've had a similar experience where you got to take a friend or a family member out and uh, get to show them what you do on your plane and how that went, <laughs> good or bad. I'd be curious to hear what people's reactions are. All right, I am taking off my glasses. <laughs> And I think my water cup's actually already inside. So, <laughs> yay! Victory's mine. Kind of like cheating because it's already in there anyway. So, see ya.